My name's Mark. It's good to be here and uh, to be able to share the word with you today. Um, so summer's done, I guess, apparently. We're in September now, and the weather is kind of telling us that apparently summer's done as well. How is everyone's summer? Busy, peaceful, restful, a mix of the two? Um, mine was kind of like a mix. The start of the summer, really busy, July, really hectic, and then it kind of slowed down, and now we're kind of ramping back up. Um, for September. So I don't know what your summer was like. Um, I don't know what your September is looking like. But I think for a lot of us, our lives are pretty busy. So let me ask you this question. I want you to think about this. If you had more time, some more free time, what would you do? If you were given a little bit more free time, how would you spend that time? What's that thing you just wish you could do, but you just don't have time to do it. Maybe you take a trip, actually have a vacation, or maybe do that activity you've always wanted to do. Take up that hobby that you've just been dying to try. Maybe you'd get to that to-do list of all those things that need to get done around the house that you keep pushing off. Maybe you just spend some more time with your family. Or maybe you would rest, you'd have a nap. How many of us would love to have some more time to nap? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's really easy for us to come up with a lot of ideas of, of things we would do if we just had some more time. And I think a lot of us just feel like we are just too busy. Our lives are just too hectic, too crazy, and we just do not have enough time. And I, I've been noticing lately that when you, know, you chat with someone almost the first thing that kind of comes out of their mouth when you ask them how they're doing is, besides, well, I'm good, and then they go on about how busy their life is. All the things that they have to do and they're doing and how little time they have to accomplish everything. And really just how stressed and tired and overwhelmed and how busy and hectic our lives are. I really think that there's busyness is this problem that most, if not all of us, are dealing with. And it's not going away. If anything, this is becoming more of a problem in just society in general, but I think it's becoming more of a problem in our lives. And when we look at the statistics, they show us this. They, they kind of back up this idea that busyness is a problem. On average, we are working longer and longer days and more and more hours each week. We're not sleeping enough. We're not taking enough time off. We are overcommitted and as a result, rushing from task to task. And we just feel like we do not have enough time to do everything that needs to be done. And the result is, is that we are increasingly experiencing higher and higher levels of stress. We are stressed out. And I think it's kind of, our lives have shifted from these occasional times of busyness, where maybe we're busy for a season or a period of time to this is something that we are just constantly experiencing. Our lives are not slowing down. Our lives are not getting less busy. The opposite is happening. It's getting busier and busier and busier. And uh, this is true in my life. I kind of look at September and, you know, September's here and I'm looking at the next four months and just how busy they're going to be. I love how Jason was going on, how his life is getting busy. And I thought it felt good because I'm going, well, mine is too and I'm not alone in this. And I'm looking at it as, you know, kids are now back at school, but my daughter is now in grade four. She can do extracurricular activities, so that means more time commitments. Uh, there's going to be, you know, mi lots of ministry things that are now ramping up here at Journey, which are good things, but they're going to take up time as you volunteer and you help and serve in the church. Uh, I have one more class left to complete my Bible college degree. And, yeah, woo! And, uh, <laughs> but that means homework and lots of reading and studying and, and things, never mind that I need to be a good husband and father and work full time. And I'm looking at September and October and November and December and going, life is going to be busy. How many of us would say the same thing? That I bet if we looked at our schedules, we opened our, you know, calendars or planners or whatever, we looked at all our commitments, I think the same would be true for most of us. Our lives are busy. And I think we understand that this is a problem, that busyness is unhealthy for us. And actually, the Bible tells us this. The Bible warns us of the dangers of busyness. 
In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verses 22 to 23, it says, What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow, and all his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This is also vanity. And what the Bible is warning us of, what the Bible is trying to tell us about busyness is it's unhealthy for us. That if you live a busy life, if your life is full of too many things, if you keep toiling and striving, if you keep doing more and more things, if you keep adding things to your schedules, this will only lead to sorrow, to sadness in your life. It won't actually make you feel happier or better. The opposite will be true. You'll be sad. You know, your life will be a vexation, frustration in what you do. Even the good things, even the things you enjoy will become a frustration because you don't have enough time to do them. You're rushing through life. And you'll have this inability to sleep. Have you ever felt that at night? where you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to th you're thinking about everything that you need to do tomorrow and then you start worrying about it and then you start thinking, I need to go to sleep because I have to get up early to do all these things but you can't sleep because you're worrying about that? Ecclesiastes 1.8, uh, it gives us sort of another description of what this life of busyness looks like, what it leads to. It says, all things are full of weariness. A man cannot utter it. I think it should have said a mum cannot utter it. But it's. Our busy lives, they make us tired, worn down, exhausted. Let me ask you this. How many feel tired? Does this describe your life? That all you want to do is just have a break from everything you have to do. To have to stop being able to, to stop rushing from having this go, go, go life, to just take some time to rest and relax and recharge, to have a nap, to be able to sit there and drink your cup of coffee, read a book, just do something else, not feeling like you have to do all these things. I get home from work, and this is how my wife feels, and of course she's been chasing after three kids all day. And she just feels exhausted and tired, and I feel exhausted and tired from all the work, and I think this is how a lot of us feel. Our lives are too busy, and like the Bible tells us, this busyness is unhealthy for us. It's killing us. It's leading. Instead of causing us to be more productive or accomplish more things or to live fuller, happier lives, which we think sometimes being busy and doing more things will do, all it's doing is wearing us down, and we feel exhausted, stretched out, anxious, sad, and it's unhealthy for us. So this is what we want to talk about today. And I think we need some wisdom for how can we actually deal with this problem. I think we can all admit that busyness is a problem. Most of us have a problem with living in two busy lives. So how can we actually deal with our busyness? And I think before we kind of address that, we need to sort of diagnose the reason for our problem. Why is it that we live such busy lives? Why is it that we keep doing more and more and more? Now, before we kind of talk about why it is that we're so busy in our lives, I do want to add sort of a little caveat to this idea of busyness. Not all busyness is bad. God does tell us to work hard, to not be lazy, to not be idle. He does tell us to um, serve him sacrificially with our time. And so if we're working hard at our jobs, if we're serving in the church, if we're doing everything God has called us to do, there will be times in our life that are busy we will experience busyness, and, and we will not always be able to avoid that. And this can be a good busyness. I was reading an article um, about busyness written from a Christian perspective, and, and the author called this holy busyness. 
And what he said, though, is what differentiates bad busyness, the busyness the Bible warns us about, the busyness the Bible says is unhealthy, is that good busyness, holy busyness, is an activity that is oriented toward God in motive and practice. In other words, what makes some busyness good and some busyness bad is our heart. The reason we keep adding more to our lives. What is our underlying motivation for why we are so busy? Additionally, I just think there are times and seasons in life where we just cannot avoid being busy. You have deadlines at work, and sometimes you need to work more hours. When you are a parent with young children, your lives will be busy, and you will never be able to avoid that. Even in ministry, there are just times when you're serving in a church, volunteering where it's just, okay, we're going to be busy for this week. Think about day camp. Those of us who helped with day camp, that was a busy, hectic week. And we couldn't avoid that, but it was okay to serve sacrificially with our time for that period of time. But I think here's the problem. For most of us, the busyness we are experiencing in our life is not just for a short period of time or a season of life. It is now becoming more permanent. It is a constant thing. There is no let up. There is no winding down to our busyness. It is increasing, not decreasing. It's not just lasting for a brief moment or a few days or even a few months. No, this is now the reality of our lives. We are busy. And I would also say that most of our busyness is not holy busyness. It is not, does not stem from the right motivations, but bad and a healthy busyness that comes from wrong motivations. For most of us, our busyness is rooted in pride, in our pride. Much of the activities that cause the busyness in our life are the result of our pride. For some of us, we think that we have to be in control over everything in our life. That we're the center of the universe, and I need to be in control. I need to have my hand in everything. And as a result, we can't delegate. We can't say no to things. We can't stop doing more and more and more because I have to be in control. And so we become busier and busier. Or we feel the need, that we need, we feel the need to keep up with everything everyone else is doing. Everything that our culture says that we are supposed to do and have and be. And so we have our kids in every activity, or we have lots of hobbies, or we ha- try to have the perfect home, or be successful in everything. And so we fill our schedules with thing after thing, and we rush from activity to activity, and all it leads to is more and more busyness. Or we work more and more hours, longer and longer days at work, Because we want to have more and more money so that we can buy all the things that we think we need, but really it's just things that we want. A bigger house, a nicer car, fancier clothes, more expensive toys, whatever it is, we work hard and are busy because we want more possessions. Or we're people pleasers. We try to please everyone. And so we can't say no to their requests or their demands. We want to earn their praise, their validation by always being the yes person. Yes, I can do that. And we don't want to look bad in their eyes. And so we can never say no to that request. And so we just get busier and busier. Or we just try to prove, we're trying to prove our importance. Show how great we are by always doing more. Look at everything I do. I am important. I am valuable. I am worth This is my problem. I'll just be honest. This is, I think, at the root of a lot of the busyness in my life is I want to be seen as that guy who is always serving, always helping, particularly in church and with ministry things. He's always committed, always there early, always doing the extra thing, stays late. And I struggle with saying no to serving and and volunteer opportunities because I'm trying to prove my importance. It's how I almost got double booked today. I was going to have to teach Sunday school and preach, which would have been interesting. I don't know if that's you, but I think for a lot of us, our pride causes us to have busy lives. 
Busyness is an idol that has taken root in our heart. In our pride, we worship busyness, believing that it will give us what we desire, the praise of others, the possessions we want, the control over everything, the importance we crave, that validation. We think that busyness and doing all these things will give these things to us, and so we worship it with our time. And so if we actually want to address this problem of busyness in our life, you need to first begin by examining your heart. And begin to evaluate, why am I so busy? What is the underlying reason that I have such a busy and hectic life? What's causing me to not be able to say no to that request for my time? What's causing me to keep adding more and more things to my schedule? Why is it that I'm always doing more and more and not taking time to rest? Where has my pride caused me to bow to the idol of busyness? We need to diagnose our hearts. Look inside. Ask God. Reveal what's the underlying reason. Where has my pride caused me to live busy lives? This unhealthy busyness. So then... The question now becomes, well, how do we actually deal with our busyness? We know we have a problem. We know it often stems from our heart. So how do we actually go about dealing with our busyness? What practical, what wise steps can we take to begin to combat and overcome this problem and live less busy and hectic lives? The first thing I would say is you need to learn to know when to say no. You can't do everything. And so you need to be able to set boundaries with your time to ensure that you are not so busy. And so this involves being able to say no to things that are going to take up more of your time, even good things. Oftentimes, it's the good things that are the hardest things to say no to. We need to learn to say no and begin to set boundaries around our time. Next, set your priorities. Since you can't take care of everything, and since there is always more things to be done, determine what is most important and take care of that. What are those things that have to be done? What are the most important things in my schedule that need to be done? That becomes my priority, and maybe let those peripheral things fall away. You don't have unlimited time. Time is a finite resource. And we must manage our time wisely. And I'll be honest, sometimes busyness is just a result of poor planning. We don't plan well enough, we don't manage our time well enough, and so we run out of time and have to rush and are busy as a result. Set what your priorities are and ask God for guidance. What should my priorities be? How should I be using my time? And then guard them. Finally, I think you just need to rest. Just get some sleep. In Psalm 127, verse 2, it says, It is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Sleep is a gift from God. It's a good gift, right? I think it's a gift we wish we had more. Don't stay up later, Don't get up earlier because you feel you have to do more. That's what the psalmist is saying. Don't do that. It's it's bad for you. Get some sleep. God has given you the gift of sleep. Use it. He wants you to rest. I would also say that we should observe Sabbaths, and that's plural. Take time each day, each week, each month each year to rest and relax and recharge. God has ordained that we should put times of rest into the rhythms of our life. That's why he instituted the Sabbath in the Old Testament. I think that's why God set the precedent of resting on the seventh day, to show us that we need to have Sabbaths in our life. 
God wants us to rest. We need to rest. And here's the thing. We shouldn't feel guilty about resting. Because that's oftentimes why we don't rest. We feel guilty that we should be going and doing something. We should just rest. So I think those are some of the practical, wise ways that we can begin to, I think, deal with this problem of busyness and maybe unbusy our schedules. Ultimately, though, as good as I think wise and practical steps are, ultimately our problem with busyness is a heart issue. And so as good as that advice is, I don't think it will ultimately address the problem unless we address the source, the cause of what is our problem with busyness, and that is the heart. And so how we deal with this problem is by addressing and uprooting this idol that has come into our heart. And we do this by realizing our dependence on God. If we want to overcome busyness, we need to realize that we are dependent and must rely on God. I think we like to think that there is enough time in the day to do everything that needs to be done. We kind of believe, and I've heard this statement, and you know, I even heard it in church sometimes, that God gives us enough time in the day to do everything that needs to be done. Have you ever heard something along those lines? Here's the thing. I actually think that statement's wrong. I don't think it's biblical, and I, I don't agree with it. There is never enough time to do everything. We don't have enough time to do everything that needs to be done, and that's the point. Because there is never enough time to accomplish everything we need to do, it makes us reliant on God. When we worship the idol of busyness, when we don't say no to requests for our time, when we think we can just keep doing more and more, when we think that we're strong enough or smart enough, or efficient enough, or a hard enough worker to keep adding more to our schedules and not stopping and not resting and just doing more and more and more. What we are saying is I am self-sufficient. I don't need God. I'm sufficient for myself. I can handle this myself. And we're not trusting God. We're not trusting him when when he tells us, you need to rest. We're not trusting him when he says, busyness is unhealthy for you, and you need to stop living such a busy life. And we're not trusting him when he tells us he will provide for us and help us. When we worship busyness instead of God, we're not trusting God, but we're trusting our own strength. We're trying to do everything in our own strength instead of relying on God. Our busyness, our tiredness, the weariness we feel from everything we're doing, this inability we have, it seems, to to do everything that needs to be done is meant to be a reminder that we need God. I am not sufficient. I need to rely on him. I had to learn this the hard way. God kind of taught me this in what was, uh, I would say, the craziest, busiest, most hectic week or month of my um, life. It was uh, a December, and uh, so December is already kind of a busy month because you have Christmas and getting ready for that and family obligations and everything around that. So it's already a very busy month. Uh, I was serving at a church as an associate pastor, and near the beginning of the month, the senior pastor resigned um, quite unexpectedly and immediately effective immediately. Um, So suddenly right away, we have no senior pastor. I'm the only other pastor on staff. So suddenly my workload like doubles as I'm trying to, you know, we're trying to figure this out and fill in all the gaps and I have more responsibility and trying to, you know, take care of everything that needs to be done in an already hectic month. And, you know, there's things happening. Church, we have outreach events and internal things that are going on because it's Christmas time. I'm leading the youth and children's ministry. That was my supposed to be my area of of, um, responsibility, and so there's still things we're doing with that, with the youth and Christmas parties and outreach stuff. Um, The children were doing a Christmas play, so there's 
uh, rehearsals and dress rehearsal and, of course, the play itself on a Sunday morning and everything involved with that. On top of that, um, I was taking a Bible college class. Actually, Pastor Dan was teaching it. So I have, you know, final paper due, final exam, all the studying I'm having to do. And, and so it's just crazy busy. Oh, and there was one more thing. My wife was pregnant and would give birth to our youngest, or our son, uh, three days before Christmas. B because why not? You know, two days before the Christmas Eve service that I'm supposed to lead and preach at. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, she actually went into labor the morning of the kids' Christmas play. So yeah, it, w it was honestly, I've never had as busy and hectic a month as that. And it was crazy. And here's my... Here's how I would normally have handled it, because um, I can't say no to things, you know, so of course it's just adding up. I would just shoulder the load. I would just go, I can make it through here. I'll just work harder. I'll just put in more hours. I'm strong enough. I can do this and get through this crazy busy month. But I couldn't do it that month. There was just too much happening. There was just not enough time. I was just worn down, weary, exhausted, stressed out, stressed out, anxious. Like, it was just too much. And in that moment, God taught me that ultimately I need to be dependent on him. I have to rely on him. I couldn't do it in my own strength. And the entire month, this verse kept going through my head. I actually read it the day before the pastor resigned and the month became crazy. And it became like the, the verse that God was trying to teach me the entire month. It's 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 to 10. It says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I realized in the busyness of that month that I am weak, and that's okay. God wants me to know that I'm weak, and he is strong. And I realized that God was telling me I need to be more dependent on him. I have to rely on him. I'm not self-sufficient. He is sufficient. I'm not strong enough, but he is strong enough. I learned dependence on him. And it was able to help me with all the busyness and craziness of my life. And actually try to balance things better. You see, when we become dependent on God... It helps us realize our limitations and really this need to stop, the need to stop being so busy. Dependence on God, it uproots our pride. It destroys this idol of busyness which is in our hearts. Because when we realize that we're dependent on God, we realize that we can't do it all. That we aren't self-sufficient. That we aren't strong enough to just keep doing more and more. Dependence on God causes us to trust and rely on God with our time and schedules and to really stop feeling the need to be so busy. Stop feeling so guilty about taking time to rest. Stop feeling guilty when we aren't busy. To stop trying to do it all and keep giving in to the busyness. It teaches us to rely and trust in God by having balanced schedules by being wise with our time, and by taking time to rest. And then when we become dependent on God, the amazing thing is God begins to uproot this idol that's in our heart. But if you just uproot it and don't replace it with anything, it just comes back. And so he uproots our pride. He uproots this idol of busyness and he replaces it with the good news of what Jesus has done for us. That Jesus died for us and he loves us no matter what. That Jesus doesn't love us because of how busy we are. He doesn't love us because of how much we're doing or how much we've accomplished. No, Jesus loves us unconditionally. And in Jesus, we find rest from our striving, our anxiety, our rushing, our never-ending to-do list, our full and crowded schedules, our busy, hectic lives. We find rest for that. 
because Jesus speaks a better word to us. Unlike our pride, unlike the God of busyness that keeps whispering in the back of our head, keep doing more. Don't stop. Just work harder. Add more. You need this. Don't stop to rest. You need to prove yourself. You need that new possession. You need that validation. You need that praise. You need to be in in control. Don't stop. Keep going. Unlike our pride, which keeps telling us these things, Jesus speaks a better word to us. He says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus doesn't say, get to work. He says, it is finished. In Jesus' death and resurrection, we find the freedom we need to stop having to perform, freedom from trying to have it all, freedom from having to keep doing more and more and, and to seek the praise and validation And whatever underlying cause of your busyness is, we find freedom from it because we don't have to impress Jesus with our busyness. He already loves us and he will always love us. And then Jesus invites us to come before him, to know him, to experience his love and all-sufficient grace. The more that we see Jesus, the more that we meet with him, the more that we experience him, the more our heart will begin to change, and with it, its perspective concerning our time and busyness, and really begin to undo this problem of busyness. In the Gospel of Luke, there's a story where Jesus meets with two sisters, Mary and Martha. And Martha, she's busy the entire time, getting things ready, preparing food, cleaning up the house because Jesus is here. But Mary, she's not doing anything. She sits at Jesus' feet, and spends time with him, and listens to him. And of course, Martha, who's all hectic and and crazy busy, gets all annoyed at, at Mary, and tells Jesus, why isn't Mary helping? There's so many things to do. Why isn't she being busy? And Jesus answers her by saying, Mary chose what is needed. She chose what is better. The best antidote to our busyness is making sure we spend time with Jesus. Making sure that we come before him and we experience that love and grace and strength that we need so that as we meet with him, he begins to reorient how we view our busyness, our time, our commitments, our priorities, and suddenly we begin to see things more from his perspective. He gives us the right perspective on how God would have us manage our time. And in the security of Jesus' love, we can find rest from our weariness and help to overcome our busyness. The best solution to our busyness is realizing that we need God and in our weakness coming before him and spending time with him. And from that, being changed. And suddenly, maybe we don't need to be so busy. Because how we view ourselves, how we view our time, how we view the world has changed. And we see things how God would have us see them. So I think we all wish that we weren't so busy. I think we all wish that we could overcome our busyness and have more time. So if you're like me and you want this, let's become, begin by becoming more dependent on God. Let's realize our weaknesses, our limitations, our need for him. And because of that, be willing to say no to more commitments. Be willing to stop adding things and just take some time to rest. And then let's come before Jesus. Let's keep coming before him and find rest in him to experience that unconditional love, that grace that he gives us, which frees us from the root causes of our busyness. Let's keep coming to Jesus to find the strength to stop being so busy and the rest we need when we are busy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that you are strong. That even though we are weak, we have limitations, that you are strong. Help us to see that. Help us to see that we need you. That we can't do it all. That busyness is unhealthy for us. That always adding more, always just trying a little bit harder to power through is not the way you intended things. You intended us to rely on you. Help us to understand that and because of that begin to change maybe how we manage our time, how we see our busyness, how we 
set our priorities so that we can live less busy lives. Help us to know how much you love us. What, that Christ loves us no matter what. We don't have to try to earn people's praise and validation or control everything or have more stuff. And so because of that, we're so busy. You already love us. You're not impressed with our busyness. Let that free us from this performance mentality that I think fuels so much of our busyness. Help us to, to always find time to know and experience you, God. I think sometimes that gets pushed to the wayside. I'm too busy to spend time with you. That should be our top priority. And as we meet with you, I just pray you would give us rest and peace for our busy lives. God, I think all of us are busy here, and sometimes we can't avoid that busyness, and we don't know what to do, and we just need your rest. We just need your peace in our life. So I just pray that you would just pour that out on our lives and help us with that. But I also pray that you would begin to change our hearts and begin to see things things more from your perspective and how you would have us use our time and, and from that begin to maybe put some changes in our life so that we aren't so busy. Thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you that you sent Christ to die for our sins and that you meet with us. God, I just think of that song we sang before and how just have your way and I just pray that you would have your way in our lives, that you would be at the center of that, that we wouldn't be our own God, you would be our God and and from that, we would just serve and follow you and, and live how you would have us live. In Jesus' name, amen.